have you guys tried making, like, what's the fanciest? Uh, well, we did a coconut Thai soup. You know, just like you do kind of a spinach appetizer. You use kale, you put some chipotle in there, a little bit of lime, you put some hot peppers, and then some crickets. North of Los Angeles, tucked away in the San Fernando Valley, a small team of urban farmers are doing their part to offer up a sustainable source of protein, crickets. Why crickets? Well, there's a lot of people in the world. 7.3 billion as of 2015, according to a UN report. And that same report projects we'll hit 8.5 billion by 2030, 9.7 billion by 2050, and 11.2 billion by 2100. So that's a lot more people, and people gotta eat. This poses a problem, because if the global population does cross the 9 billion mark by 2050, the Food and Agricultural Administration estimates that the world food production will have to increase by roughly 70%. Yikes. So, are crickets the answer? The boys at Koala Valley Farms think so. We talked with Peter, aka Mama Bear, and Elliot, aka Big Dog. I didn't ask about the nicknames. It seemed rude. We talked uh, at the end of 2014, and uh, Elliot had stumbled across this uh, you know, completely new idea of, of farming crickets. Everyone's <laughs> got their own little niche so far, and ours kind of focuses on the green and just kind of the more, a different style of farming altogether. These crickets are literally the happiest crickets you'll ever find. You'll, the most you'll... pampered, I would say pampered oh is the word. The crickets at Koala Valley Farms live on a diet of fresh veggies grown, for the most part, directly on the premises. Our crickets are vegan crickets. Do other cricket farms feed their crickets like meat? All cricket farms abroad, and most cricket farms here, feed their crickets chicken feed. You're basically eating corn, you're just removing yourself one step from it. The vegetation is supported by numerous aquaponics systems, in which the water used to hydrate the plants is enriched by the bodily waste of fish and crawdads. One time I ate a crawdad that was, I think it was full of eggs, and um, then I threw up. Really? Yeah. As you can see, I'm kind of a crawdad expert. But as it turns out, so is Elliot. So this right here is essentially uh, the crawdingus. Crawd, wait, that tiny little thing? This, yeah, well this one's pretty big. I mean, think about this. After a few minutes, we remember that we're not here to talk about crawdad penises. So Peter and Elliot lead me into their cricket kingdom. First up, the egg room. Oh, it's so humid in here. Yeah. So how many, I, I guess I don't even, how do crickets, so that's me searching for the words to ask about cricket sex. The males deposit their sperm on the lady's chests and legs. She basically gets erect on top of the soil, humps the ground repeatedly, and with each hump she deposits one egg. We'll see some egg laying in the next room, but before then I take the time to ask a tough but necessary question. You're not in the pocket of like big cricket though. No, that's the thing is there already pretty much is big cricket. There's big cricket? There are, yeah, there are farms in, the farm in Georgia turns out about 20 million crickets every six weeks. At our peak capacity in this space alone, we can only crank out about 3.5. In the next room, the adults. Here they live out the rest of their days in leisurely bliss. These are all mating? All of these are mating, yeah. These are the brood trays. Um, so you can see the females kind of digging around. We even see a cricket laying her eggs and it's just as spellbinding as promised. Yeah, you see the humping right there? Oh, look at those humps. Yeah, that one is vicious. She's, where, she's showing off. So these guys just hang out, have sex, lay eggs, and eat. It's like Club Med for crickets. The crickets will hang out here, living longer than they ever would in the wild, and they'll be humanely euthanized, slowly frozen to simulate a natural frost. From there, they'll be dry roasted and turned into food. One of Koala Valley's staple products is their charmingly named cricket breast, which is so popular that they're, unfortunately, out of stock during our visit. But they also have chocolate-covered crickets, which we try and find pretty palatable. You might notice a leg or two later on when you're driving home, but... So, are insects gonna start working their way into our diets? Maybe. If cricket meat does have the potential to help the world, these guys are pretty modest about it. But they're also passionate. I half-jokingly ask them about their feelings toward the little critters, and Elliot's answer is probably the most oddly sentimental thing anybody can say about crickets. Do you find yourself with a special fondness for them? We haven't taken a vacation yet, but I've had to take several personal days because of just, you know, trial and error. Sometimes things don't go the way you think and you lose some lives. And, and it happens and you learn from it, but spending as much time around them as you do, you just learn a lot about them. They're very skittish creatures. 
they're simple minded and, and they just do what they're what they know to do and you begin to feel for them. Yeah.